Good evening and welcome to this special session of the Grant County Council tonight. The prayer will be led by Mr. Connor with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Mr. Scott. If you would stand. And I can bow your head and pray with me. Heavenly Father, be with us tonight as we do the work to better this county. Give us good judgment and discernment. Bless all of our county employees, first responders, military overseas. Just be with us and bless our fellowship as we do this work. It's in Jesus' name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, gentlemen. If you would, do the roll call, please. Scott. Here. Connor. Here. Hicks. Here. Perez. I haven't no. heard anything from Mr. Perez. Bowling. Here. Lenny. Here. Middlesworth. Here. We do have a quorum. So tonight, uh, many of you have already been through the process. Tonight's special session is to finalize the budget for 2025. So we'll, uh, we have items to revisit that uh, we did not take action on during the process. And so this meeting is to finalize the budget and get it prepared to pass the October 16th meeting uh, for adoption. So you should have at your table an updated 4B, the one, Angie, would you like to explain what's at the table, please? Uh, the first 4B that's in your stack has um, the projected operating balance at December 31st, 2025 at 7,277,615. Um, this reflects everybody's requested salaries, um, insurance at 21,300, the sheriff's request for 1.6 million. Any of the undecided is still continued for this 4D because it hasn't been decided yet. So this is what you're seeing. Okay. So um, I did a um, comparison with three other counties when it comes to salaries. That is where I came up with the $5,000 increase across the board. Um, all of that is listed as a public year revisit sheet. Um, those worksheets are here. It's got the benefit packages for each of those counties to compare to the benefit packages that Grant County has. Um, I, do you want me to read this, what it says? Okay. Okay, so I, I requested a $5,000 across the board for all except the following um, except for the following, plus a 10% increase to part-time. Um, give the prosecutor what he requested and bring up anyone not increased. I don't seem to have what you're referring to. It's right here. It's, um, yeah, that, 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 that paper you got yeah, right there in your hand. That's in your hand. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, so to bring up anybody that did not match the 5,000 across the board for the prosecutor's office, except for the chief deputy prosecutor. Um, give the PD, the chief deputy position requested at the 137, 635, which the, there's a paper in your stack that will show what the chief deputy prosecutor full time is paid through the state. Um, it would also include state mandated raises and um, the sheriff's union. I, I mean, they're still in, con they're not asking for a raise this year because of the contract. Correct. 
but I would suggest bringing the um, longevity base pay up to the 2023 salaries and giving the highway recycle B91 and central dispatch at $4,500 raise. What does the chief deputy make now? Chief deputy for public opinion. There is not one. Oh, there is. Oh, this is the one I want to put Jerry Jerk at. This is the position that they want to take and put yeah. on these groups, right? Yes. Yeah, they uh, the public defender's <laughs> office was requesting <clears throat> the deputy chief at 150000 Correct. We did meet um, myself, Mr. Lemming, Mr. Scott with uh, the prosecutor, Scott Hunt, and we did ex extend an invitation to, to Mr. Elliott, but uh, I was not able to be in contact with him. And so, um, yeah, that's where the 150 shouldn't be any more than the deputy prosecutor, if, that's, if the council so wishes to grant that new position. And the other thing, too, is while we want to try to hammer out all these items tonight, we necessarily don't have to. Um, we can put something off till the next meeting and, you know, do an additional appropriation next year when the budget's approved or, or whatever. So don't feel like that you have to, we have to make a decision this evening. Well, we'd like to, so we can have the budget ready to go for the adoption on the 16th. So in this new position, Andy, 137000 plus to get a $5,000 increase on top of that? No, that would be just that salary. Now, the other public defenders, they would um, just see the $5,000 increase. $137,000 and all other employees to receive $5,000 it sounds like yeah I, I see what you're saying but yeah no no it would be set at 137 635 with the rest of the public defenders and staff to receive the five thousand and do we have any confirmation that the chief deputy would be a full-time and then if it is full-time does this person maintain a private practice as well or do we know that yet i don't think we do I think well, that's this, this position here on the stage is full time. Yeah, we're done. Seven thousand. That's full time position. I think, in my eyes, if you do the hundred thirty seven, you commit you to the full time. Yeah. And yeah, I like I say we was unable to meet with Bruce. Um, as it says right below that, part time is ninety thousand. Yeah, they're request, requesting a ten thousand dollar increase from fifty to sixty thousand. If you'd give the five thousand raise across the board, that'd be the fifty to the fifty five thousand, which is meeting them halfway. Um, the problem I know with, I mean, maybe Mr. Connor could chime in, but. Right now, I know, I know that public defenders don't have an experience in the office, uh, so they, the caseload can't get divided up amongst the new because they don't have as much experience. They have, it. was it three jury trials? Or yeah, I'm not sure what the specifics are, but they have to meet certain minimum requirements. At that 5,000 for the employees, what's that percentage, 13%? It's going to vary for every employee. Well, it'd be it'd be it's ten for the salary. It'd be ten for the public defender. Five thousand for fifty thousand. That's ten. Yeah, well, you got, most of your employees, your employees make you're well under that. Yeah. It's going to be, be based on the overall salary. <laughs> so it could be a little yeah. bit of nothing to a lot. That's why I decided uh, when Chuck had asked me to do a flat rate instead of a percentage because. I know I, I agree with the flat rate just because of that exact reason. We've been through this many yeah. years where somebody making twenty five thousand doesn't get the same rate as somebody that's making fifty thousand. So I know I agree with it, but I see what Chuck's saying too. He's just trying in his mind. 
I think, say, well, what is this person getting percentage wise versus what is this person getting percentage wise? Well, these worksheets, Chuck, right. it's got a column that shows a 10% increase versus the $5,000 increase. So you kind of get to see all these different departments that I did these worksheets on how much but, but Angie, I mean, trust me, you did a great job. Of, but how does that work out um, with all of those things that you've done? Um, and with you said what you said earlier, um, we're still not to what the rest of the state is. Is that what we're saying? We're still that far behind? Uh, yes. I Like I said, I'm just comparing these three other counties okay. with us. They have this um, comparable AVs, comparable... Um, Census population, population. Um, which is Dearborn, Warwick, and White. These are also their 2024 salaries. Okay. They are going to be getting increases for 25. That's right. going to put us behind even. And, and that make and that makes sense. I agree with you. And these. Salary increases does reflect this model. model no, correct? there is a another 4B at the very back of the stack that I gave you. Another 4B. It'll say at the top, my 4B given the proposed raises. It's the very last four in your stack. In the green, it says uh, my 4B given the proposed. Yes. This is given the raises that I suggested with um, the, also my suggestion with the health insurance portion that comes out of that, and your bottom dollar is at the bottom. It would be $8,227,732 as your projected operating balance. And that's, again, leaving in um, all of these outstanding issues as requested. You know, the sheriff's department for the court. So when it comes to raises, a um, little bit uh, talking about AOD, the timekeeping system that the county is trying to implement. And I know it's been a, been a headache for the auditor's office and staff. And so one of the things, if you read that, look at the bottom, and this is in the commissioner's bailiwick, so to speak, but I think that if you know, this is a would be a huge raise, right? I, mean, I think we could all agree to that. Five thousand would be you know at least ten percent in most cases. So I got to thinking about how to make the AOD system work a little better for the county employees. And so we could go back to a forty hour work week, which would be eight to four, but do a paid lunch. Uh, currently we're doing eight to four at a thirty five hour uh, unpaid lunch. That would help some issues with AOD, uh, conforming to more of a business standard. Uh, it would change the hourly rates from employees that it was figured in the 35 hour, if you went to the 40 hour. The other thing I think that we need to look at is when it comes to comp time, um, you know, comp time can be abused. I think we got to look at maybe going to a, a time and a half system, like, like in the business world, where you get time and a half for any you know hours after the 40 hours. I know certain offices like the comp time. I, I know it can get abused easily, but AOD, I, I believe is hard to, to calculate comp time. It doesn't like to calculate it fairly. It's not correct. Um, I, I, I don't trust the calculation method that they have put in place on this system. I keep track of my girls separately. Um, it doesn't take into consideration when you take sick days or vacation days or birthday holidays or it, it, it just doesn't want to calculate properly. The other thing too that, uh, again, this is in the commissioner's uh, handbook, when it comes to sick days, yeah, I think we should just do a straight PTO uh, calculate, you know, a set number of days that are paid time off days. And kind of I, in the business world, people are getting away from sick days because you call in sick and you don't want to make your employees lie 
that they're not sick, right? So I, I think there's some reworking of that that could be done too to help the AOD system. But if we don't make some of these changes, um, the what the initial reason for getting the system was for accountability for our employees, clocking in, clocking out, if you're not gonna use the system like it's intent, they'll probably be going back to the old way of doing things. But what we have found with this AOD system is the departments, their intention was to keep track, to make the departments accountable for their time. But you've got department heads that still will go in and manually make those changes. So what's the good of it? What's, what's the point? So anyways, just be thinking about that. That's nothing that we can take action on tonight. Obviously, this body could make a recommendation to the commissioners that you know, we want to go back to the 40-hour work week, 8 to 5 or 8 to 4 with the paid lunch, and just change some of those little things to help the system. Does that make sense? So if we made these changes that suggest to the AOD system, your confident would work. I'm not confident of anything that's going to work until I see it in action. I'm and hoping that it would improve. Yes. I mean, you just spend time and a half instead of having to deal with all the other stuff. I believe it would, yeah. 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 if it calculates correctly. Yeah. Right. Wow. yeah. So I think when it comes to time and a half and you know whether you're getting comp time or time and a half, the commissioners are going to have to specify who is allowed. To get you know, get the overtime. And you can budget for it. Yeah. I don't think the commissioners have. Um, I, I don't think they have the oversight or the capability of making that decision for your department heads and yes. elected officials. Does the uh, employee manual talk about overtime and comp time? How they're supposed to be handled? It does, but I would have to reread. That, that's where you have to make sure that. In the, Commissioners normally adopt that policy, but this body also signs off that as well, I think. Yeah, so you want to make sure that the combat, that manual, whatever it's called, the compensation, policy, the policy handbook, handbook yeah. make sure it reflects what you want to see done. And I know they have, we, we had a group that worked on that policy handbook several years ago, and it's still not. That hasn't been changed finished. to reflect. Bottom line, if you want to do something to change either uh, over time or, or a comp time, you need to make sure your handbook agrees with what you want to do. So can the commissioners change the handbook? Oh, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, commissioners can change it, but I think this body has to sign off on it as well. Right. It's kind of like a dual. Yeah, should have a check and balance, but still. It usually gets initiated there, but either way, it could initiate it and get the conversation going, I think. So, Angie, if we did go to this, would those same department heads still go in and do those changes that you were speaking of? More than likely, they have the capability of doing that, and that is that's written within the system. So yes. But is there any way we can throw a red flag to let you know they're doing it? The only thing that you guys are the commissioners would have the capability of going in and reviewing all of it at any time. They have that capability. They can <laughs> make it known to that department what is going on, but they right they, they, they don't right. have. You know, it's, right. it's not their department. They're they're not the elected official for that department. Some departments right. they want to be have more control over yes, than the others. The elected official they wouldn't get a chance to control as much as they would a highway department or yeah, some other commission you can go to. You can call them out. Now, the thing of it is, uh, if, 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 if an elected official is not complying with what the compensation or the handbook calls for, that would be an audit. That would be something to be brought up to the state board right. of accounts for auditing. Yes. Yeah, so that should keep at least keep yeah. in line right. somewhat. The fact yeah. that if yeah. that is reviewed, you're not complying, you're at fault. That's going to be something that's pointed out at an audit. I, would think. I think the question is, as you ask them, is how would you feel if your name was associated with that in the front page of the paper tomorrow? Yeah, some would like it, some may not care. <laughs> I think that a lot of times that maybe they don't remember to clock in at the computer or whatever. That's different. Okay. That's totally different. I mean, no. you can go in and make those minor changes or doing that. You know, that's that's that minor. Sense, yeah. But um, does it show like in red if you do it manually versus? Yes. Okay. That, that was what I was thinking. Yes.
Mm -hmm. How did we get to the system? Commissioners brought the system forward again. So. Uh, at the time that the uh, AOD was implemented, we just having uh, some ghost employment. And so there was one accountability for their employees. So they implemented it. I believe the sheriff's department uh, under Reggie really wanted it. So they ended up paying for half of it, didn't they? The system. They, they paid a hefty chunk, like twenty-five thousand, or maybe it was half of it. Um, I'm not sure what that exact amount was, but yes, and commissary. And they it. still haven't come on board with it yet. No, and that's been a year. Yeah, the girls are working almost with the two, almost two years. February be two years. Yeah. Or do we need a new system? There are other timekeeping systems out there, but I am not familiar with any of them. We, we, um, we were brought AOD because of our financial software, Lau. That is who they recommended. We got to have accountability. Though. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's make or break in a company or in the government. Because, you know, we are the government, guys. We have to run how we run it. And ghost employment, that is a very... Yeah, that's a sticky thing there. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I, I wanted to bring those ideas forth. That way you could be thinking about them. I did have a conversation with Mr. Uh, Stewart, and he seemed receptive to the idea of making some of those changes. I did also uh, spoke with Mr. Sadoff, and... There were some changes that him and I had already uh, agreed upon. So um, I guess we can move on to the clerk's request. Um, it's recommended to increase the part time as requested to 18,403 within the election department. And that was due to the presidential elections. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Poling, a second from Mr. Lemming, to go ahead and increase the part-time overtime request within the clerk's uh, budget, 18000 <laughs> to the $18,403. Are there any questions or comments from the members? Public input? Uh, roll call, please. Um, Connor? Yes. Lemming? Aye. Scott? Aye. Hicks? Yes. Polling? Yes. Middlesworth? Yes. Motion carries. We'll move on to the next outstanding issue. Um, you know, we tabled the commissioner or the sheriff's request for the out of county inmates. The request was $1.6 million. Uh, this body tabled it during the budget process. Personally, I'm recommending that we put it in the budget at a million. Whatever the whatever that amount is, that it kind of needs to be abided to, because that's going to determine how many out of county inmates you're going to have. And I believe it was forty dollars a day, so that would be what seventy some. Seventy three. Well, it was just under seventy three. Yeah. I also need to set a limit on how many more we're going to keep sorting out. Yeah, so that, I think that dollar amount should determine the limit that this is, you know, we're going to budget a million dollars roughly. That pays for 73. It's like 68 and a half. But, yeah. 68 and a half. Yeah, $40 a day. It still seems like a lot to me. <clears throat> And I know that the juvenile side of the detention has the prices went up. Uh, right now, we don't know that the adult amount has gone up or not. It's still hovering that forty dollars a day. And I just feel like right now it's just it's it's, it's so open ended. There's just so many inmates that's being that's being sent to other facilities. I, I think, like Chuck said, we need to we need to put a cap on it somehow. It's just it's getting out of control a little bit. So there's like going to be a need to have to be placing some. I 
guess I would even feel comfortable at five hundred thousand, but I don't know about I don't know about a million. Yeah, the request is for one point six. Do we know how much we've used to date? I'd, I'd like to think that with the conversation on public defender and just what we know about that and the prosecutor, that maybe we can speed this up a little bit and not have as many. But yeah, but who, who's, who, who's to say, like I called him out when he was here? I, mean, oh, I agree. I'm just saying they, the conversation. They all shows. complain about each other, but now it's payday. They're all patting each other on the back. I mean, guys, we need to really know where it falls so we can help these people fix it. So we are paying all this money. Mark, is your reasoning that if we raise the pay of the players, the PDs, and the prosecutors, that you're going to have people run through the system faster and well, the so, help is what they're saying. So when we met with uh, Mr. Hot. Not the pay necessarily, but go ahead. when we met with Mr. Hot, it was, you know, we've gave him last year everything he requested. My question was, if we give you everything this year, as you requested, how do we how do we know you're hitting the matrix of you're getting more cases through the courts? And so, I was gonna, go so he uh, he presented a document that shows Judge Spitzer Circuit Court. Um, and he has a thing talking about how long they're in the systems and how long it takes to get through, I guess. Is the easiest way. Well, Mike, I think Mike we need to keep there. an eye on this. I think we need to remember this moment. If we give that kind of increase to the PDs and the, and the uh, prosecutors, we need to remember these standards and look and see next year if it improves. Yes. Because I, I got two big concerns. And you know me, I'm always advocating for good, fair pay for these folks because we gotta have we gotta have these attorneys in place. But I can tell you we're getting up above what the private sector is paying. We can't compete with the kind of starting salaries that are going to be paid to these folks. That's the first concern. And the second concern is in all due respect to my brethren attorneys and the other folks in that system, ask yourself, are they really really going to work harder and bust but yep. to get more cases through Just to catch us up because yep. there is some talk in the community that there's a lot of coasting going on and doing awful minimal work for the pay why yes. some folks and, and even in other counties <clears throat> view those positions as play cushy Attorney positions. Yeah. I, so if we give if we give these raises, we need to look long and hard next year at the at the man. What was that the data the the to see if it helped? Well, well, the the thing thing is, is, that was our case docket. Case docket. That's what it was. He, uh, he had it from Judge Spitzer that showed that. So I docket. So, so the cases that was being resolved compared to the cases that was just being brought in. So there were there were there were they had a performance a formula. A percentage that was breaking down per each court, the ones that was getting through the cases faster than the others. And we had, we had some that was over 100%, so that meant that they were resolving more than they were bringing in. And we have some courts that wasn't close to that. To that number. I when think I ran into the data that we need to take it. Very well taken. I ran into Evan Hammond Friday, and he showed me his paperwork. And he said, I said, What's the problem? And he, you know what he said the problem was? Postponements. He showed me papers, got 11 postponements, eight postponements. I mean, for stupid stuff that they shouldn't even take that much to. You know that. I'm not accusing any one person me neither. Or, no, me of neither. doing that. But in my business, we call that milking a file. You, you run it out as long as you can, and you settle it or plead it or something at the last minute. I mean, how many things are being tried, taken to the mat? Right. You know, that's part of what causes us to have a over the top census of prisoners. Jail, yeah. So I'm Last just. Time I checked 90% were plea bargains. That yeah. was a year and a half ago. Well, and, you know, I, next year, I'm going to look at that data. And even then, I'm going to look at it with a little bit of a jaded eye because right. the, the data is coming from the folks that need for the data to look good. 
True. Uh, as I say, is it audited data or is it data that gets compiled? But I think we need to look at it like in a quarter, like in three to four months. I think we need to look at it and say, hey, let's give us some input as where are we at after he showed us that. I mean, our biggest takeaway, I thought, was, well, that's something we can measure. But at least let's, let's look at that. I, I think My hope is that the higher salaries attract good, higher quality people who are going to get in and work and work their butts off to process these cases. I hope it's not the opposite, which is taking people out of private practice where it's it's tough, tough to make a living and getting into on easy street. My I God, hope I, it's not that. I didn't think we about We need to keep an eye on it. I, I didn't think about that. You bring up a very good point. That, that salary gets to the point that it's competing against the private sector. I didn't think about it from, from, that, from that viewpoint, but I mean, that's, that's a very valid. Well, we just brought on a new associate, and this is, I'm not telling anything out of school because it's a matter of public record. He's a part time deputy prosecutor now, so we're paying part of his salary, and the county's paying part of the salary. But for that, I don't know that we could have paid the kind of salary it would have taken to get somebody to come here to Marion, Indiana. Thankfully, his father is a surgeon in this county, so people with connections to Grant County and Marion tend to have a higher desire to come back here. But it's getting tough. Well, I think that's what, I'm, what I was trying to tell them. You know, everybody's short, man. But you got to pick it up. And it, it's heck when you got to pick it up, but you got to pick it up so we're doing the right thing. And we're not, this, this overcrowding is just crazy. And, and I did bring up the fact that, you know, if, if, if the prosecutors, if the prosecutors are getting a $20,000 raise, does that mean that they're going to be working any harder? I don't think so. I hope so. I don't think so because typically it tends not to go that way. But I, but I also press upon the come with a plan. How is this going to look different than what we've been doing in the past? And, and, and what are the goals? How are we going to measure those goals from year to year or quarter to quarter? However, I think that's important data that we need to have in front of us so that we know this is working. You know, Mr. Hunt asked for an additional prosecutor. And, that was part of what I had asked him. I was like, how is that going to change things? And he talked about how he was going to put two prosecutors in, in each one of the courts, and, and he would be able to go through the cases maybe a little bit faster with, with the additional prosecutor. So in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, are we better off with a new, another position to have another deputy prosecutor in there as opposed to just giving a $20,000 increase just to, just to give one? So yeah, he, I, he made an argument that the reason for two was is if, if one gets postponed the checkpoint, then the other person should have that other one ready to go. And he said, a lot of times the problem I'm having is because they don't have experience. He, he goes, if we don't have this one and it gets postponed, we're not ready for the second one. So then it looks bad on our side of it. We're in a tough position. It is. I it mean, is. I'm, you know, because of what I do, I may have a little bit more insight, but I'm not, I'm not a public defender. I'm not a prosecutor. I'm not a judge. So it's tough even for me to say, uh, I want to have faith that the folks that are in that system are working hard. We need people that are putting in the hours, not cutting out early. I mean, every everybody in the whole judicial law enforcement uh, system has got, got to work, got to get in and work. The kind of hours I do in the private sector, that's what it's going to take. Well, I just keep looking at the public defenders, you know, like how big a raise you gave last year like 28,000, something like that. And Those big ones. And that's all we heard was the public defender prosecutor from the judges. And of course, from the then here, it's the judges. You know what I'm saying? And, and again, I won't go on the record because these are the folks I have to work with. <laughs> well, I know. But I'm I am saying, not saying they're if not. If I got a 28,000 out of range, I'd, I'd be stepping my game up a little bit. I, I think we have a great judiciary. I hope they're listening. Good judges, and, good, and I think they do a good job. I just, I hope and pray they're paying more than we're getting what we're paying for. Well, and I think if you just step it up enough and get it cleared out, then you can kick it back down, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We just got to kick it up and take care of this problem. Crime rising is part of it. Yes. Uh, not having a big enough jail is probably part of it. And the system, the players that are getting these cases too, it's all part of it. Oh, it's multifactorial. And, you know, uh, Mr. Meeks, when he was running for judge, he made some comments regarding the judicial system that I think kind of flies in the face of what you're talking about here a little bit because he would say 
there are some decisions being made to continue cases that shouldn't be made. Judges have to step up and not do that. The prosecutor, prosecutors need to make sure the evidence is available to the public defenders and so forth. And public defenders need to stop going for all these continuations that they get. Well, yeah, like, that, that's like, everybody doing this. Yeah. Giving them more money isn't going to make that stop. Well, even like when me and James was over here and we was looking at the TV and we was asking Bruce about how come you guys don't use that TV so much? You know what I mean? He said. Yeah. That belongs to the public defenders. We don't let up the order to use it. We're like, why not? Ain't that county property? You know what I'm saying? I mean, what, if you could get them through there faster, you wouldn't have to take them out of that jail. It seems like a win-win. Yeah, it seems right. like everybody needs to step it up. And I yeah. you obviously you want to pay a salary to those positions that is worthy of what they do. Right. I'm not arguing that at all. Right. But you don't want to reward them for poor performance either. Right. And sometimes there's a little bit of a flavor that we're rewarding those guys, giving them more people, giving them more money. Or is it because they haven't done a good job to get to where they are already? Jim, you mentioned the information being audited. Do you know if is there any service that, that would audit that kind of information to see if we're getting bang for the buck? I mean, there uh, public public accounts in the area might do something like that. It would cost something to have that done. But well, we but, spend an awful lot of money for outside consultants to come in. It'd and, be something and like that. You'd have things, to do. You'd have this to do might like be that. one. But that, that is part of the problem. I mean, obviously, the data you get comes from the source, and obviously, you hope it's correct. Yes. But the people doing it are the ones getting impacted by what you're going to do as well. Yeah. So it's not independent, I guess. Right. I want to say. But it's right. a good point there, I thought. And I think, and I think looking at it, you know, and, and again, the, the, the sheriff's request, and hopefully that the out of county inmate po uh, placement would go down because of three things because of what you just spoke about with Judge Meeks and the comments that he's made, the direction that I feel that he's going to go. If we do grant an additional deputy prosecutor, not necessarily the races, but the, the additional deputy prosecutor, and then if we do go with the chief deputy position, that's going to go from a part-time to a full-time position. So hopefully between those three things, that will alleviate some of those outside outside placements that's taking place. Well, you know, every time I talk to him, Mike, he always tells me that he don't have enough seasons, right? Uh, Scott, he don't have enough seasons, right? So I asked him how many he had. He said he had four new and three seasons. Well, I could, I hate to think that you had three seasoned people. They couldn't teach two of those four people. You know what I'm saying? I know in our conversations, he made that same uh, comment that he only has three, and he feels like that uh, the pay, if, if we could get the pay to what he requested, he could maybe try to recruit another seasoned employee. Well, I, keep I think next week. year when Judge Spitzer comes in and gives us the state of the judiciary, we need to remember to ask him, is it working? Is paying these folks more working? And what are the metrics that you can you can point to to show that it's working? I think we need to get the metrics, if we approve anything, we need to get the metrics, that way they're filed, on file, from the judge, right? And then next year, when the body looks at the raises, we like, okay, these are the metrics, you know, then yeah. see see where you're at. I agree 100. percent I like to see the metrics before approving even this to know what we're going into for 2025. That we have something measurable right in front of us, and we know the direction that we're that we're going into. I think it'll make me feel a little bit better with these decisions that we're, that we're making. At least we have a plan. A place the plan's not working. We have we have we have you know, a way to measure that and know if it is working or not, and then we make another change if, if we have to. But at least let's have a plan moving forward as opposed to just staying with the status quo. All right, we know what the status quo is getting us. It's, t it's time to get outside the box a little bit and come up with something new. I think we gotta just remember, we all got one goal. <clears throat> we gotta be a team, everybody, so we can fix this, and bring this county back to where it's supposed to be. It's got to take everybody. We can't have resistance. We all got to go, okay, we made mistakes, no fault. That's what do we do to fix it. Amen. Even, the, even when your house is the public defenders, prosecutors, we're still behind the state average, right? Um, I know you had that, that. I don't know. That was the comparison with Boone County, which they took away. Just look at a comparable county. Which I believe they were all they like, like eight at 110. They had 13 at 100, or they had 10 at 113,000. 
That, that was Ben County. <laughs> they have um, a couple of the counties, the, pro the public defenders aren't even part of their salary ordinance. They are strictly paid through contractual services, and that's not through payroll. So I have no idea what their case is. But this will get us pretty close, right? To where other people are used to Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But that depends on what those counties decide to give for their 25 raises, too. So. Yeah. But it would bring them up closer to a 24 salary, yes. Well, I and the the county has always been behind when you compare to what you said, a block of 10 counties we were kind of in the yes. mix with. We were always eight or nine to the 10 of those 10. And uh, I'm not sure what this, you're saying this is in the average range, I suppose, kind of thing. Yeah. And obviously, one of the goals of this body is to uh, pay your employees reasonably. I mean, that's one of the, and it's a good goal to have. Uh, and hopefully, in some of these changes you've made, the last couple of years, you've done a heck of a job of trying to bump things up. So, I mean, I think you already started that path, I think. And right now, you're in a great financial position when it comes to operating balance. My concern is, can you sustain it over a long period of time? Uh, I'm not saying you can't, but that, that's a concern I have in mind as you make those kind of decisions. And uh, we don't know what the funding future is going to be. Uh, is the state going to change our tax system to some way that's going to make it even more difficult? Is our population going to keep decreasing? So far it has been, and we don't know that, obviously, that you don't have a crystal ball. That's why I'm saying you, you do these kind of things, I'll say, of this magnitude, because to me that's a big raise. I mean, you've already given a big one, so this is going to be another big one. You do that with that thought in mind, you know, that we want to do it for our people, but you got to make sure you feel like you can sustain it, most likely. Now, if you, it's always tough to bring it back once you've given it, I think. So, not saying you can, but you got to be thinking about those as you make that call. And I was in a meeting a few days ago, and I haven't been able to verify this stat yet, but it was it was told to us that Grant County is now the poorest county in the state of Indiana. Per capita income, we've taken that is that, right? that mantle now. We're fifth highest so. taxed. Well, you know, we used to, and it's been well since I think it's in the data, but back when I was on the council, I remember I saw this. So we actually, on the spending per capita, we were like six from the bottom. We were did a good job of spending tax dollars. Now, that may have changed in the years since I've seen that, but we were really, I'll say, low when it came to spending per capita. But obviously, income per capita makes a difference, too. I, I remember that stat. It has been a long while since it, I've It's been a while since I've seen that, since I've looked at it. Yeah. You're right. We were like six from the bottom as far as spending. So we did a great job of spending taxpayer money because we didn't have that much to spend. I mean, obviously. Right. right now you're in a better shape. You've got some dollars to spend, but you just got to make sure you do it wisely, knowing that salaries, you know, it's not a, that's not an asset you're getting. It's a cost. And you got to make sure you can sustain that over time if you're going to put it out there. Do you remember that? What's that? Was that AIC? Do you remember? Uh, it would have been the Department, uh, Department of Local Government Finance probably had some of their data that would have shown that. There were some reports that they compiled that would show spending per capita. Let me see if I can find it. Might be on Gateway. It's possible on Gateway. It could be. I'm, I would think they would still do that kind of reporting. I haven't seen it for a long time, but I would think that would still be out there. I just know that's one of your goals, and you guys have done a good job of trying to increase people's status as far as pay goes in the last two or three years. And you're, you're talking about continuing that, and it's in big chunks. I mean, you're talking five thousand dollars raises that would have been unheard of a few years ago. I mean, a thousand is what we used to shoot for. You know, you're talking five of them. That's five years of raises. Um, Can we make two percent? Yeah. yeah. I hear you. Shane, do you think that the detention center needs to have something in yeah, the budget? I, or? I think we need to leave it in there. I put it back in. Do we know, Angie? Did you calculate the raises for the detention center? I. Or you put them well, in at the I last. Well, I put them in as the sheriff's department. So what the sheriff's department is currently making in the jailer position is what I put in the detention center. There was no longevity because. Yeah. I've been yeah. here when people will work. Yeah, no, I think we got to leave it in, even though we may be, you know, a year away. Oh, I'm sorry. And obviously, it's not spent. It's going to go back to the general fund. How much? 
I so um, to date, they have spent $337,040 for out-of-county inmate housing out of $750,000. Okay, now the $338,000 over what period of time they spent that? That is, uh, they began doing this in May. We got so May, June, July, August, is that September? And September is five months they've done that. That averages to sixty-seven thousand six roughly per month. Sixty-seven six times twelve would be eight hundred and eleven thousand. And I had suggested to Shane maybe half of the one point six million or a million. So. Yeah, which I think a million would be more than enough at the sixty-eight and a half. And then that gives him a. Oh, he's still got four hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. That's for this year, though. That's, that's for this year. It'll oh, end. For next that's going to end. Yeah, that's going to end December thirty first. So we'll have what October, November, December. So three months, one hundred eighty. You got more than enough at the rate that's being spent mm -hmm. at this point. He did make the comment at the last council meeting that he was getting ready to move more. I don't remember the number he said though. Oh yeah. Well, one of the goals, and Shane, you mentioned this in a conversation that you guys have to be aware of as far as how much capacity they want to have in there and the rest are going to be shipped out. So you got to be aware of that as well. That enters into this decision. Is that a good thing or not? Yeah, yeah because I think the last time I checked uh, yesterday, the day before, we had 300 in there. Plus, but we had, he said, 80 out shipped oh. out. So that's had 380. 380. If he wants to have it like a what eighty percent capacity or something like that, yeah. that changes that a lot too. Yeah. Which I, they said nobody ever heard of that. Before. No, there's there's no way. Yeah. No, so that's, that adds that number yeah. a lot of you. I mean, we're, 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 we're staffing for at least two hundred eighty. The eighty percent capacity is going to take us down to two hundred and twenty. So that's sixty inmates that should be here. That's now we're shipping off to another county and paying forty dollars a day for. I just don't want the mindset to be, which I feel like it has been that. <laughs> If we budget the 1.6 million that he's going to spend the you know every dollar. If we budget a million, we're saying that we'll agree to the 68 and a half for the year. The problem you have with that is if and you don't know this obviously, yeah. but if legitimately you need more than yeah. that, then are you going to say no at that point? I, I don't know. So what was what would the average be at 12 months? 800,000. 811,200. It was. Yeah. Where would we use? 11 two. That's that the way it's been used May through September. The, oh, the cost that it's been, if you take that on average and project that for 12 months, yeah, 811,200. I don't know if it started out slow and it's gotten bigger. If we have to, we can additional yeah. appropriate. Right. So, yeah, I'm saying five, I agree with Mike, 500,000. If they need more, let them come back. Because they already still got some more. We, we, well, remember that ends. And at the end of December, this is, you're talking new money at the beginning of January 1. Right. So if you go 500000 based on what's being done currently, that's not enough. That's that's not enough. Well, your goal is to do a reasonable budget. You want to have a reasonable that, budget. Is that, that 811? Currently, 811 is what you're Is that reasonable? Well, based on what they're doing now, as long as you're okay with what they're doing now, that's reasonable. So, or Brent, you think it should be the million? <laughs> What's that? You think it should be the million? Well, I'm not going to say it's a million. I, I, I would be more a million than 500,000. 500,000 is too low. I'd propose 900,000. Unless you're, unless you're going to say to them, hey, you can't go any more than what this is going to let you do. Yeah, that might have about 750 in between what we're both are. I'll go 800. I won't go anymore. <laughs> yeah, we have you, something in that ballpark. Whatever you, you want to feel like it's a reasonable amount for you for the year is what you want to kind of have in mind. Now, if you feel like it's going to be abused, maybe you go low and then you're going to bump it up at some point. I don't yeah, think, I, I in no way, shape, or form would accuse uh, the sheriff of abusing that. I mean, I think we're kind of stuck with having to do that. I understand. But I'm just saying that that's how that's really what we're talking about here a little bit. Is do we really need that or not? I think if we set it like seven fifty eight hundred thousand, we're 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 bringing accountability. And we got a good argument for why. Mm -hmm. We just did the math, and that's the math. I mean, to me, that makes yeah. The, the current usage rate is eight hundred eleven thousand right. a year. So, and we've still won the prosecutor, public defenders, all those yeah, people to get it along. It keeps coming back to that. It you does. get people convicted or what, or acquitted. Or whatever. Yeah. They either go to DOC or they get out of our yeah. hotel. So, so, or they stay here for the rest of their term. Yeah, their term is, is at that point identified how long it's going to be. Well, that's because DOC is. Mm -hmm. His level six felonies are going to be here. Prisoners like they should. Thank well, it's really going to be on you guys because you got them around the council. So, hey, you guys want to. Hey, hey. 
<laughs> Old Remedy. So 999. Yeah, I heard 750. <laughs> Are we to the point, or honestly, that we need to? We're only going to. We need this for the budget, though, right? To get yes. passed, right? Yeah, yeah you're gonna, you have to make some decision to, for the 25 budget. What you're going to do with that? We're to the point that we need to say we're only going to pay for this many inmates to be shipped out of county per month. I'm not sure you can say that. Yeah. I'm not sure you, you can want to say that. I understand the thought of wanting to, but can you really say that? Well, you know, this wasn't nothing new. We never had shipped inmates out of county before until now. Well, the reason, the reason I say that is if I'm the sheriff, I got, let's say legitimately, I have to ship out more than you give me money for. Either we're going to have an overcrowding more, or I got to ship them out. And, and so rather than ship them out, they're going to be here staying. And never that forget. opens your door to more issues and problems and public scrutiny and for strings. You know, law, federal lawsuits. You know, <laughs> well, I was going to say, never forget what the ramifications are of overcrowding. <laughs> A federal judge building your jail for you. I mean, I still, you talk about expensive. Remember, it comes back to that reason. What's reasonable? What is, based on what we're, what our operation would be, what is a reasonable amount? And because all we can do is open and close purse strings, I, I think we just set a figure somewhere like we're talking yeah. about. So at least the sheriff has to come back and report in when he needs more money, explaining why, what's going on. Yeah. And our that, cases, way we'll know, that way we'll know, too, if it's moving, people are moving out, get less, or you're getting more. If you, if you had one of the things you guys could ask is, I'm not sure it depends on the case, obviously, but one thing to maybe have in mind is, what is the average length of stay per inmate? And they have them calculate that for you, give you, give you an update every every quarter or whatever. What are you, how many, what's the average day that person's Are we allowed to ask that as a council? Why not? I thought he gave us a number. Yeah, we've had that number before. <laughs> Oh, you see the jail report that show many inmates are, but I'm talking about how many per day, what's the average yeah. stay? If I think we're not in, only allowed to ask it, I think we have a sheriff who would gladly answer that question. We, we basically well, I mean, we've been asked it a couple times. Yeah, we've got, I mean, we know we've got people over there for five years, four yeah. years, three see, years. And, and another part of that is how long is, what's their stay before their trial is, due, before their uh, right. case is decided, before it's adjudicated? How long are they here before that? In DOC, oh. not taking anybody that, unless they're above a level six felony. Yeah, level six stay here, I think, for the most part. There may be a few exceptions, yeah. but for the most part, level so, six. So, you know, here. if folks get convicted of level six or low, lower offenses, we don't have any choice but to keep them in a county jail, either ours or somebody else's. Yeah, I agree, but you can still ask those numbers. You know, before, before that case is decided, how long are they here? Yeah, how, is that going down? how long does it take in your case to get through the system? Right. Well, I think the other, the other question needs to be asked is how many continuances are being granted? Yeah. Of course, that's not the sheriff that says that. That's the courts that. But you're yeah. looking at 11 right. continuances. On this charge, there ain't no way. They should, somebody should have been able to go. Okay, it's over. You know what I'm saying? Well, hopefully, you know. And the guy was still in jail. On that. So, what's the amount you want to use? I need I'll concede at 750, but I would rather have 500. But I'll I'll, I'll go along with Mr. Connor and be meeting somewhere in the middle. I'm already married. I'm not married today. <laughs> All right, if that's a motion, I'm, I'm already I'll, I'll, I'll make it a motion that we put $750,000 in the sheriff's county inmate. <laughs> So I have a motion from Mr. Scott, a second from Mr. Connor to approve within the Sheriff's Department budget for out-of-county inmates, 750000 Are there any questions or comments from the members? Public input? Roll call. Scott? Aye. Connor? Aye. Hicks? Yes. Polling? Yes. Lemming? Aye. Middlesbrough? Yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> Item number two under the sheriff. I think I think we should just leave that in the budget the detention center. <coughs> if there's no action, then it'll just stay in the budget. Correct. Correct. Um, we'll move on to the health. Uh, uh, move staff from the 1159 to the 1161 with two additional new positions, and 1161 as requested. Do we allow that to happen? Do you want to refresh us, Angie? Or? 
Well, Tara, Tara, why don't you refresh us? So there are two more people. That's yes. Right. Out of the 1161, which is the state funds that we will see. So that's six people you hired out of that money, correct? I don't know. I wasn't prepared for that question. What was your question? That would be six people altogether. Oh, yeah. You're talking about new grant. Well, the new state funding is not a grant. You hired four before, right? I hired three. Now you hired environmentalists, a nurse, a school lady, and one of the other. That's all. Check in the door. You don't have to tell me that. Here's your. I'm shifting several people over yeah. to some grants that they keep telling me it's not a grant. Okay. Um, the reason for shifting, the county match was lowered dramatically and the state funding was raised. And of the state funding, which uh, I, I can tell you how much that was, 60% of it has to be spent on preventative. Only 40 can be spent on what's considered um, enforcement. So I felt like shifting all of the nurses over there and all of their salaries would, would make it easier for me to meet that 60% requirement because they're all considered preventive. So that was the reason for the decision of who I shifted and why I shifted. We approved the peer support. You are correct. The we community partnership. Um, so yes. Right. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so we just need a motion to allow this to happen. Uh, allow eleven sixty one to the two additional positions, which are the food safety inspector and then the new health educator nurse. I think it's kind of a two-part thing, isn't it? The first part was just switching from 1159 to 1161, and the second part is adding the two description places. I think we made it clear that night if this funding was to be dissolved at those positions. Yeah. You go back positions. to... I mean, you're going to absorb yeah. all the positions I originally had back yeah. to the county, correct? Yeah, okay. yeah that would be the thought. Really painful, but all the right. Right. They go, they go. And all of the programs that they create will have right. that over them. Yes. We just make you guys do more. No. Still pretty busy. Remember how we just talked about picking that up? I do. Still pretty busy. <laughs> She's been ghosting too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And on the solid vision worksheet that was in your budget, yeah, budget it does show <laughs> which positions I mean, we'll moved from 1159 to 1161 that will go back right. if this is ever dropped. <laughs> I, I just kind of remember it from what we talked about. Everything organized. Right. Yeah. 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 And then when I showed her that, she's like, I'm like, I know 90% right. Is there any other discussion? I'd entertain a motion. <laughs> motion would be to move the staff from 1159 to 1161. And create the two additional new positions in 1161, which would be the food safety inspection officer and the nurse health educator. Zero effect to the general fund. So, so. Correct. Actually, it's helping the health fund because positions are moving to a state. So I'd second. Okay. I didn't. You made the motion, right? Uh, Chuck, Chuck. Chuck made the motion? Yeah. You I was just asking your um, question. Okay. <laughs> I have a motion from Mr. Poling, a second from Mr. Lemming to approve within the health department to move the staff from 1159 to 1161 and create the two new additional positions in 1161, one being the health safety inspector office, inspection officer and the other being the nurse health educator. I believe the request for the food safety positions at the 45,236 and the health educator would be at the 51,036. It would be a nurse. Nurse, okay, yeah. Sorry. 
Are there any other questions or comments? Public input? Roll call, please. Bowling? Yes. Lemming? Yes. Scott? Aye. Connor? Yes. Hicks? Yes. Middlesworth? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. You have everything you need for that? Yeah, okay. The, I, I would like to say, though, that the 45236 is the same as the environmental specialist. If, if the $5,000 increase is allowed, hmm. would I increase that position to match the other positions that are comparable? Please do. This, yeah. Would the funding support that? You can't with the new person that don't know nothing. You can't give them... It, she doesn't have to pay him. Jeff, right? She doesn't, not Jeff, Jeff Helpers. Oh, or okay. I would think that you would give them raises to the whole department. Whatever the raise would be, it would be to the whole department. <laughs> or whatever the number is, okay. or percent. Or yeah, what, yeah. Whatever ends up being. But that grant has to be supported. It, it will. Okay. I, 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 I talked with her about yeah, that. Yeah, we have to. So I can resubmit the grant. It'll be okay. Yeah, we, we, we thought of that too. No grant. I have to. They keep telling us it's not a grant. I have to keep reminding you it's not a grant. It's just today's funding. Sounds like a grant. <laughs> 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 looks like one. Looks like one. Looks like one. There is one. I'll just buy you. Okay, it's not a grant. Well, we'll move on to the next items that we need to revisit. The recommendation uh, for the health uh, within the commissioner's fund, the health fund, the 5,200. We'll go ahead and um, fund it at the 17,500 for the health insurance. Uh, we believe that's a good number to get us to this 7 million, roughly. And, and actually, the budget is 7 3, is and this really doesn't impact that. It, the, that brings it $6 million as the it's revenue right, piece. Instead right. of 5.7, it's 6, uh, 6 okay. million. And then the 230 for life. That stays the same. Yep. Is there a motion for that? So moved. Second. I have a motion for Mr. Scott, a second for Mr. Poling to approve within the health fund 5200, and we're going to fund at the 17000 Five hundred for the health insurance and two hundred and thirty dollars for the life insurance. Are there any other questions from the members? Public input. Uh, roll call, please. Scott. Aye. Pulling. Yes. Connor. Yes. Hicks. Yes. Lemming. Aye. Middlesworth. Yes. <laughs> just one thought. I didn't say public comment, but just one thought. Revenue six million. Potential expense seven point three. So obviously that's a negative 1.3 million that you're exposing yourself to. If, if everything came in exactly as expense or went out as expense and came in as revenue, so but you have a large cash balance to uh, to absorb that, that's not a problem. But I wouldn't expect it to go that far either. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Have you, have you ever figured the stop loss what which actually it can ever get to? I, well, yeah, I heard uh, I got the number for because I asked Ann, she got the number for me, and the number she got me, oh, wow, that's too low. We already spend more than that, but what we spend includes the insurance and all that stuff too. So uh, the stop loss for claims is like 5.3 million, 5.5 million, something like that. So we'd be close then. So, yeah, that doesn't include what we pay out in insurance and other things too to, to add up to that potential 7 million. But uh, I would think we're okay with that. Okay, I, I don't see any reason for 25 yet anything to worry about. Obviously, you reevaluate next year to see what happens for 26. But. Based on the, how things have gone, we've been really in good shape. Now, I, I can't guarantee I got a bad claim here somewhere. I mean, who knows? But, but I still think that amount lets you absorb even a, a, a rough year when it comes to claims. Okay, so Thank you. You can feel good about that. At least it sure looks like. Just don't kill me with nothing. But, yeah, it should be good. <laughs> Remember, October 2nd, 706, <laughs> Jim said. <laughs> Catastrophic things happen, but boy, that to be a big one. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to item two. I mentioned uh, during budget evening to create a new maintenance department called Building and Grounds, which would be number 0313 and appropriate $25,000 in a preventative maintenance account. I think. Um, we we done a um, 
we, we currently have the jail maintenance yeah. department, and there's a twenty-five thousand dollar appropriation in there uh, for jail maintenance. I believe it is what it was. Correct. And, yeah. And and zero that out and put it into this department. The idea was if you gave them their own department and they could have some funds and some accountability that they could go out and do some of this preventative maintenance stuff that we're seeing. Right. And, you know, there'd be, okay, hey, we got the funds. It would, in a sense, kind of be like what we've done for IT or Central Dispatch. Recently, we created their um, department within county, correct? Yes. There's also a salary portion of the maintenance department that is paid out of here. I would love if you guys would allow it to be moved to the commissioner's budget it's so that it's not separated out like that. I don't know why it was ever done that way. So should we should we move the maintenance employees to this budget instead of having them in the commissioner's? We could very well. Why don't yes, we do you that? could create um, a salary line. I don't have that amount right here available to yeah. give, but I could have it for the next meeting. They can approve it this way if they wanted to. You can still yeah. have regular budget yeah. approval. Yeah. Yeah, I think we create the buildings and grounds to go ahead and just put the maintenance salary piece in buildings and grounds and then go ahead and eliminate the preventative maintenance su supplementing their salary and just have it all paid out of buildings and grounds. I think that makes it a little cleaner and a way to track it and in a sense it's creating an identity for maintenance in my eyes. It's twenty-five thousand or not? I think that was what was in the jail. Maintenance. Yeah, she'll move more when it comes to the salaries and stuff. She'll probably be moving more up to that. Yeah, well, right. if we have a year's tournament, so we leave that much in there. If they gotta come to you, they can come and get some. You know, once they they're ready, there'll be more than twenty-five thousand actually. Put yeah, yeah. The twenty-five thousand. Yeah, the twenty-five thousand is just the appropriation for preventative maintenance. Right. right. The salary portion would be separate, but yes, I get what you're saying. Is twenty-five thousand dollars enough? Right, because the, I mean the jail is Sorry. for the non-salary piece. You mean yeah. the non-salary piece? Because obviously this building, the courthouse, anywhere else, you know, the, yeah, over obviously. here, there's there's more to cover than yeah. Obviously, just the jail. we didn't go through the details and break out of the, the commissioner's budget all maintenance items, but probably at some point. Yeah, you could later on you, yeah. when you look at that closer pull out yeah, of the commissioner piece that. and put it into that. Yeah. It's just to make sure you don't have any tools that. Kids, I'm going to give them a reason to do some stuff. Is this number two and three together? You're actually doing two and three together, it sounds like. Is that right? Yes, yes. That's what I'm thinking of, yes. Yes. Thank right. you. <laughs> second. I have a motion for Mr. Poling, a second for Mr. Scott to create the department, the maintenance department called Buildings and Grounds. And appropriate twenty five thousand into a preventative maintenance account. Zero out the appropriations in the jail department, which is zero three eighty. Zero out the twenty five thousand for repairs of equipment, which is now in the new maintenance department. And zero out the salary portions and move um, them to the uh, from the commissioner's uh, salary account. And actually, you just change it. You want to move this from the commissioner's sure. account to go to the yeah. jail or this? Yep. What's it called? Building and grounds department. Are there any other questions from the members? Public input? A roll call, please. Polling? Yes. Scott? Aye. Connor? Yes. Hicks? Yes. Libby? Aye. Middlesworth? Yes. Motion carries. We'll move on to the circuit court. Uh, the request was to increase the per diem to 80000 as requested. Angie, do you have any? We we discussed that. I believe that was a good number. That is what Mark had, yeah. Judge Fitzer had requested for their jury and stuff. So. What was it? Eight. What was it? Yeah, what was it? Like, uh, off the top of my head. That is 70. This year, um, the budget was 52000 
But as of 531, they had already spent 45000 So, And I do believe they have come in for an additional appropriation. Yeah. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion for Mr. Scott, a second for Mr. Lemming to approve the increase in the per diem at 80000 as requested by the circuit court. Yeah, that's all courts combined into that, right? I they believe you so. all the courts that want to count it. Yes. Correct. Yes. Are there any other questions from the members? Public input? A roll call, please. Scott? Aye. Lemming? Aye. Connor? Yes. Hicks? Yes. Bowling? Yes. Middlesbrough? Yes. Motion carries. This list used to be much longer. Appreciate it. We worked harder. Uh, uh, the EMA request, uh, they uh, request to allow full time deputy director and a part time operations chief. And I'll be honest, I do not remember. Requests. How's a person working part time now? He has yeah. two part time staff. He wants to move one of those to full time. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And I know that and you got another part time. Just eliminate one part time. One part time. Yeah, one full time, one part time. Yeah. I know there have been discussion about utilizing the preparedness grant money to cover a portion of that salary. And if I understood Tara correctly, to do that, they would that position, that chief or that new position would have to allot 10 hours a week to the preparedness grant work. Correct? Because we can't move it. Right. They're supposed to be considered a part-time health department employee. So is that doable then? I mean, Bob. Asking, is there a way for them to be part of the EMS, part of the health department? Yeah. So I'm talking to the yeah. state um, preparedness department about this. They aren't thrilled with the idea because if we have an emergency. Yeah. Your, your EMA is going to be hyper focused on the emergency. And if there's any public health involved in this emergency, then the EMA employee is going to be pulled towards the EMA portion, not the public health portion. So they don't like the idea. They said there's nothing in writing that says we can't do it, but they, only one other county in the state does it. And when tornadoes went through, it created a problem for them. Which we was doing it that way before, though, right? No, she was half of um, health department at the EMA. She just stayed located over there, but she was on health department staff. She was paid to do the health department. Are you talking about Amanda? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, sort of. She was on my payroll. But she was also on Bob's. Mm -hmm. So it was a split. But we were using her draft to she was, pay. She was, um, Yes, that was when there were three part-time people doing preparedness. It's gotten too big. I can't. I, there are these classes now that whoever, we have to have one dedicated preparedness coordinator and then one designated health department backup. Who, I mean, our backup is going to have to go to a two-day class. I just can't handle it anymore. So we, we have, um, Dean is actually going to be the backup. But, um, so who's our preparedness coordinator now? Right now it's Bruce. Bender. From my conversations was that Bob Bob Jackson, the director, that mostly has all the information. He goes to the same trainings. The thought was, if he was wanting that new full time position, why couldn't that person do the role that you know uh, that Bruce is doing right? Because I believe that way. I mean, it was kind of done before, in a sense. And so that would give the, you know, it would offset the salary some, somewhat. Mm -hmm. And then we need that salary, right? Because you don't want to take it out of that because of what she just said, right? 
Yeah, for what she's saying right now, we were gonna eat the we're gonna eat the full amount or whatever the dollar amount. Forty-eight. I'm not saying yeah. it can't be done. I'm saying it would be complicated. Well, yeah, but we don't want to do that because we've done dollars somewhere else. Part of the EMA salaries are reimbursable, correct? Yes. And I'm trying to remember from the presentation. I, I don't remember. I don't know if it's a percentage, but I do know it's uh, this year and next year we are to receive $30,000 in reimbursement for that. I think it's a flat amount. Is yeah. that... and, and Bob said that this new position would be reimbursable as well, correct? I, I don't, I don't remember. No. I don't think it would be. I think you have a max amount that you can receive. Yeah, I think it's just flat dollar amount. No matter how many you have. Right. Because I just gave Amanda a whole bunch of last year or this year's information so that she can file for that reimbursement. And I had to give all three employees uh, pay information for salaries. So, are you saying the majority of the counties in Indiana the preparedness coordinator is through the health department? It's a separate employee through the health department. Yes. Well, Angie here says part-time operations chief. So then one of the part-time would be in. They currently have a part-time admin assistant. They have a part-time deputy director. You would do away with both of those part-time titles and create the new part-time as the operations chief. And then that would be their one and only part-time. Yeah. And their full-time would be uh, a deputy director. Let's put the back right <laughs> You want to see it? There you go. Thank you. I actually, it was right here in your packet. Well, I do have a plan out for everyone. <laughs> I forgot. It just, it, to me, it was more palatable if you could get the, you know, do the, this, that guy could do the grant work in the health department. It would be a you know. great thing. And if, then if they're already doing similar. <clears throat> Meetings, and they're, they're gonna, you know, almost two for one. But I could understand you can have an event, and you know, what where you're gonna focus, right? right. But what does it sound like there needs to be further discussion about this before we make a decision? No, not, not to make a decision. Right? Like you can make it. Leave it up to 24 salaries so that I can run the numbers for the finalization of the budget and then make your decision when you adopt the salary ordinance. Same thing with the raises. You can leave everything at the 24 levels. It should be nice to decide something tonight. It's not going to make the decision any easier. It's, it, it, it's going to be harder to try to, try to come up with a final number for the 16th if I don't have yeah. guidance where you want me to go. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I do think that uh, the director within the EMA is thinking, you know, long-term he needs to train somebody, right, to be a director, you know, uh, succession plan, so to speak. So, I mean, I see the benefit of that. I just was hoping maybe we could offset some of the costs a little bit, which would be a difference of what, uh, as the number of hours of the need, it's a call for more hours in, in a position, is that happening? Uh, you know, did he, I guess, defend that or describe that when he was presenting? Because he's got a, well, the reason I say that is he can train his part time deputy director to be the, you know, the full time director at some point, but so maybe, there's, maybe the need has increased as far as hours. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, sure the difference in the budget was the 31 
700. Right? From part time. To From Roy was requested till 24. Oh, I see. Because he's requesting 48 and he's getting 21, or I guess 14, 5, right? And then if you took the 25,000 grant to offset the cost even more, you're getting that palatable range. Right now. <laughs> I would also say the last 4B that I did does include the request as presented. So moved. Just like the just like it is. Okay. So create the full time position at forty eight thousand and part time operations cheap at twenty five per hour. And that's your Is there a second? Second. We have a motion from Mr. Polling, a second from Mr. Hicks to <laughs> approve the request for the emergency management agency. Uh, budget request uh, to have a full-time deputy director in the amount of 48000 to create a new part-time operations chief at the $25 per hour up to $14,000 and eliminate the part-time admin assistant and part-time deputy director positions. Just as requested by the director. Are there any other questions or comments? Public input? Roll call, please. Polling? Yes. Hips? Yes. Scott? Aye. Connor? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear Aye, Daddy. Lemming? <laughs> Aye. Middlesworth? Yes. I remember calling until the full response. Excuse me, that should have been I, Lassie. <laughs> and my pronoun girl. With the expectation of doing more work. So now we're circling back to the top. I'll just read the request again. Just maybe you can be. Is there any before we do this? Is there anything else you'd like to see as far as percents versus dollar amount? I think if we if we do this five thousand, well, at least work that forty hours, like you said, with you know paid lunch eight to four. <coughs> Probably can't do the, the paid lunch in 40 hours stuff down on your own, I don't think. Uh -oh. okay. Yeah, that's the yeah. commission. That'll be something you have to take later. Mm -hmm. It'd be a dual role between commissioners and you guys at some point. The other. Um, my assumption was that was always worked that way anyway. Paid lunch, 40 hours, 30 yeah. hours. Hasn't been for ever. Yeah. I don't remember it ever yeah, being know. anything other than that. I was thinking it's 37 and a half versus an hour plus 35. Yeah, actually, 30 37 and a half. I feel con I feel confident that with our conversation with Scott and the Matrix, I think we go ahead and his request. Uh, Mr. Hunt's request. You know, as he presented his budget. Still, I think we're still at or below a state average. Um, yeah. Now, you, you, you see, not really a state average, or average of the counties that are similar. Yes. Right. 
comparable counties. Yeah, yeah not state average. That's right. different. Well, shouldn't you do the state average and no. state count? I don't know if you want to get into that. <laughs> yeah, well, he looked away. Yes, that's yeah. why uh, There's some big counties out there, too. All the rivers. Compare ourselves to Hamilton County. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. You're going to be paying me. Yeah. Yeah. Do that, and I'll apply for one of those jobs again. <laughs> Today, right? <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Mike's comment just resonates with me. I never really thought about it from that standpoint. What it's going to do to private attorneys? I mean, a five thousand dollar increase, even for the deputy prosecutors, is still pretty good. Pretty good chunk, and he is getting a new position out of it as well. The private practice, you know, as they've increased their rates, I'm sure, to be, you know. Yeah, but it's, I mean, I've seen cost. I mean, I've seen what we're paying. You know, one of the attorneys is three hundred dollars an hour. Well, and I'll tell you, uh, my firm's in a better position to do that. Where it's really going to hurt, I'm it's smaller firms and sole practitioners. I mean. And I won't get into the detail. It's not my ox being bored as much as it is others. I understand. I, mean, I don't have a problem getting to that point. I just I guess I'd rather face it. Over. But how much time do you have? We don't have much. We're overcrowded now. I mean, we gotta do something. But I'm like Mike, you know. If we gotta give it to them, then we should tell them that what we expect that you know we need to get to work. It. And have the courage that if if things don't get better, say it's going down. Right. Come to us. I know that's unprecedented, but you gotta light a fire under people sometimes. If, I mean, I'm more than willing to pay good wages. For hard work. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Right. But it's going to take the prosecutor to demand that from the deputies. Right. Be, uh, what we pay him to do. Yeah. And I'm, I have a little bit of experience in this. I tried to be a deputy prosecutor for six weeks. The result <laughs> was a heart attack and I quit. <laughs> I'm sorry, public defender. <laughs> um, so I wasn't going to stay in it and milk it. Not that anybody has. I'm just saying that would have been a temptation. I got out because I couldn't do the job. I have two speeds on and off. <laughs> and that's what we need. I make a motion to pass the prosecutor's request as he presented it. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion from Mr. Poling, a second from Mr. Lemming to approve uh, the prosecutor's budget as he requested. Are there any other questions or comments from the members? Public input? Uh, just to make sure that entire number two is what is, is, what is being motioned or being approved at that point. Number two on the list. Yes. Okay, so it includes the five thousand increase, except for you and all that kind of stuff. Okay. No. Uh, no. No. Just because... the just the prosecutor's budget. Okay, so just the first part of that. Well, right. It's... Just the first part. Yeah. <laughs> the second part is only. Okay. Give the prosecutor what he requested. Period. Is what we're yes. Talking about. Yes. Okay. All right. Because I'm just looking at what the sheet says. I want to make sure we're on the same page. Any other questions or comments? A roll call, please. Polling? Yes. Lenny? Aye. Scott? Aye. Connor? No. Hicks? Yes. Middlesworth? Yes. Motion carries.
feel good about that one. Well, we're going to implement the matrix. We're going to come back and review her. <laughs> matrix. Matrix. Matrix is Keanu Reeves, which is a great thing. I want that too. I want to go. With the numbers coming. Matrix. Thank you. Um, Is there anything else you'd like to see in comparison with other counties? Or, like Angie done a uh, great job in comparison. I do appreciate it. I don't want to ask her to do it anymore. <laughs> I put the time and the staff put in for all of this. It's quite time for something I know. But if you can find five more counties out, I'm just. <laughs> They're on that list. <laughs> I've got their salary ordinances. I can do that. Did she get overtime for doing that? I know. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's that's happy to do. was a can of worms. <laughs> yeah. Well, could we do the, what's your thoughts on the longevity for the highway and the sheriff's department. We could go ahead and. And I did the longevity increase for central no. dispatch also. And central so dispatch. So anyone that received longevity no. increased the twenty-three salary. And that we we'd have to open the contract back up and get the union to approve that if they, right? I'm not sure about the longevity portion. I mean, if longevity is in the contract, I think you'd have to have. Yeah, well, I, mean, about, I mean, obviously, you're yeah. giving them something they don't have, so they'd like that, I think. Yeah. Does that open it up to other things? I don't know. If you've I don't think it does, because I think we've done it before that way. Just, I'm, I'm not sure. Just Do you have your motion that. Are you saying we have? Because I don't remember us ever doing that. We did it when we did the 21, or was that part of the contract? I thought that was part no, of we the extended. It might have been. I, uh, we might extended. Want to make sure you're, from an attorney standpoint, you're okay doing that. I, you might want to make sure that. That's a question Phil would always answer. So I think we need to turn that question over to Mr. Clifffield. I would recommend you do that just to make sure. Be safe. Okay, didn't, we, we, didn't we last year? Didn't that long gym become in effect there when we was last? Because when we were doing the with the union meeting with the union over there. They asked for it. Yes. Yeah. Because you could, if you if it becomes a question, having to open up the whole contract, you don't want to do that. Right. You might want to say, hey, keep in mind next year we'll make sure we both take care of them. You know, the next time it's open, kind of thing. Is it open next year? Yeah. They're talking now. I, I know. They're, cool. well, they're talking as far as they're negotiating now. Wow. No, they're just discussing. No negotiations this year. Yeah. Okay. Not this year. That's what I thought. So, I, unless the attorney says you can do that without opening it up, you might want to. Yeah, I want to. Check that to make sure. They did, you know, not request any increases this year Good. for next. You lost me. Mm -hmm. I just remember, I, th I don't know what year it was, but we we done something and extended the same to them, whatever it was. I don't remember what year it was. <laughs> uh, so if that's going to be not an issue till we talk to the attorney. I'd like to keep them all in the same year. Makes it easier. And even if that doesn't get resolved until after the budget study, you can always take care of that in 25, you know, at the start of the year or something like that, if you had to. I mean, I guess what I'm saying, you don't have to hold everything else for that. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Well, we could agree to the state mandated raises. Hmm. <laughs> no. Some of them. You can't do it enough. No. Yeah, that's an easy one. Do we really have to accept that? I don't think we have any choice. It's going to happen anyway. Right. We have to accept it. No, we don't have to. I mean, we can if we want to, but, but I used to we used to use those in the past is because we gave raises to other than the mandated raises. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so those are already taken care of. So the our raise that we gave involved the other positions that were not state mandated. 
Yeah, because they're going to get them regardless. We can't do anything about it. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. You know, with KD? What's that? We do anything with the PD thing? I mean, it just depends on what raise you want to give. I think you want to grant the PD is position. I mean, I want some assurances that the chief deputy is, is going to be full time, and that's going to be their only job as being chief deputy. So that's going to be a table well, for that. For that. Well, price. can you approve it for that price? It's it's full time on the, on this paper. Well, you we can approve it pending that. Pending that they are full time. You know, pending that, and, and obviously having that department head state that that's the case, or whatever. You can always, I guess, revisit that. I mean, you may know before you get to the actual uh, adoption of the salary ordinance, too. So and I would assume if you're full time PD, you'd have to vacate your private practice. You could write a budget that way. Right. The salary ordinance is low. Right. Because you, if you set the uh, salary, whatever it is, that mean, you know, if you set the budget to include it, when it came down to the actual salary orders being adopted, it could be less because you found out later, hey, it's not going to be the case, so we're going to approve it at this amount instead. Are we going to okay. put a cap on, we could pin it proving full time, but put a cap on it that they wouldn't receive any additional funds from like contractual chins or any of the other? I believe so. Yeah, just as presented. You're not supposed to suggest you're going to require that that be the case, it sounds like that. Right. So if we require that be the case, and then we've got to make sure that it's uh, full time yeah. and it's a pending motion, right. yeah, I would make that. I'll second. I have a motion from Mr. Lemming, a second from Mr. Poling to approve adding a chief deputy's position to the PD. With the full time pay of one hundred and thirty seven thousand six hundred and thirty five and require that it be a full time position and that they would not receive any additional uh, pay from contractual chins or contractual services. Is that all? Yes. Are there any other questions or comments? Public input. So roll call, please. Living. Aye. Polling. Yes. Scott. Aye. Connor. Yes. Hicks. Yes. Middlesworth. Yes. Motion carries. <coughs> which that is a portion reimbursable. Sixty percent. Sixty percent. Has pending based on full time. So. That better not be part time at that rate. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're talking at least double the going private rate. I'm taking that job tomorrow, he said. <laughs> <laughs> it just might be busy after all. I'm transmitting my resume. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Leo? Hi, what? Right. Because we've got done the longevity, right? Yeah, number one, you haven't really acted on it either. Throw a dollar amount out there. I don't want to entertain you. Okay, any card for me, any card. So nothing is decided on the sheriff's department. Nothing on longevity. So leave it at twenty four. Yeah. Salary. Okay. Yeah. Leave the leave both all the longevity the same. For the sheriff's department. For every, all of them, because okay. we're not going to raise any of the others unless we raise them all. Okay. If. Uh, with the five thousand dollar increase, gets the judge's request for their 
um, was it court reporters and bailiffs? Court yes. reporters and bailiffs to the over the request of forty five. It's like forty five and some change. Yeah. And this eight point two does cover five thousand dollars pay. Correct, Angie. Absolutely. Jim, with the numbers you see, how long do you think we could afford this? I, I'm not prepared to answer that. I, I mean, I haven't looked at it like that. I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, that looks great. I mean, that's that's a big number at this point. I've never seen one that large. Yeah, it's, I mean, I remember there used to be like zero. But, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not sure the answer to that. I mean, it's the foreseeable future it looks like, but I know, think, I'm not sure what the legislature's going to do next spring. Or, yeah. I think we need to get the message out there to our employees that don't expect this to continue. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're doing the best we can to get things bumped up, but it could be zero years for a while. Yeah. What, what was that? Uh, the five million, five million, five thousand dollar raise. How much did that cost? What was the number of people times five thousand? One point six. How much? One point six. One point six million. Three hundred twenty people. Pretty close. One point six. Well, you can see then. Each year you pay off one point six. Hopefully, you get more money coming in to offset that negative. But of course, you're gonna get raises the next year. Yeah, you, that's always an intent. So, I mean, there's a cushion there. Just Yeah, and I keep going back. I mean, between between Sheriff's Department and Commissioners, we've approved $2 million in additionals this year. That's all right. Is that right? Yeah. Big one being the... Uh, but isn't that included in the inmates? Inmates. inmates. Yeah, inmates and some, some meals. Yeah, the additionals should be, be reflected in that balance. Yes. I think this yeah, approved should be in there. Oh, okay. So how do we go from... I'm curious, maybe... We go from the uh, my 4B given the proposed raises and ending with 8.2 to the Wednesday, October 2nd levy and ending with 7.2. Because I asked that, ask that same question. Yeah. <laughs> because of the calculation for the insurance, okay. everything was calculated at 21,300 to begin with. That was our formula yeah, that we that used. Got lower, that got lower. Um, oh, okay. More uh, an adjustment to the FICA adjustment to the PER because they were much higher when I presented the budget than what's going to be needed at the adoption. How do you know that? Calculation of the salaries. Well, an example, of that, here's what raised the question in my mind, Mark, when I saw that. If you look at the, uh, get right there, the 4B to the back that shows the 8.2 million operating balance. Yeah. Look at the reassessment fund. Line one, three hundred eighty-three thousand dollar budget. See that reassessment fund is the third column. Okay. It says total budget three hundred eighty-three thousand two fifty-seven. Yeah. I see. Well, if we look at the other page, the total budget six hundred sixty-one thousand. So, man, how did that go down on that big chunk? Yeah. Well, she said because the insurance contribution for that fund went down from instead of twenty-one thousand per seventeen five per. That okay. sounds like a lot of difference. Everything was. Presented higher, and now it's that's an example of that budget yeah. going down, so it means your bottom line goes up. up. Yeah, I, 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 that makes more sense to me because I was like, I don't know how that, yeah, that, that was my problem. Ooh, how'd that happen? But yeah. and even $4,500 per person, right? Yeah, you're talking at what 21000 to 17000 you know, $3,500. That's a lot of $3,500. There was there's something else in there, there's got to be something else there. there. Yeah, there was something else. Right, like. Uh, That's, that's 1.1 though, 3,500 per employee. Yeah, that just reassessment fund we're talking. Uh, uh, you're saying if you look at the overall. Yeah, I'm just looking at the overall employees. Yeah, that would, yeah, I would but not, not all of it gets paid out of these funds. Part of it's out of grant funds, part of it's out of the EDIF fund. So you can't just do that for okay. the set. Well, I'm done poor Angie about that all, <laughs> all week. So. Well, that's a great problem to have. I, it's just, uh, are we going to keep getting the income every year? Is it like this? Is the 
you never know that going in, obviously. Never. And you always think that even if something changes legislatively, there's going to be some kind of replacement mechanism to make up the difference. But, I mean, you don't know that, but you expect that kind of thing to happen. Right. But. And in looking into your comparisons, we are, uh, we give 3% more than our Wayne County, meaning we pay 3% um, towards each employee's FERP, and then our actual um, lit rate is double theirs. Or, or that's a new point, five, five is double theirs, you mean? Yeah, that's an interesting thought. Oh, and, and, and keep in mind this too, I'm not sure how those are broken down. Our 2.55 could be broken down different there's 1%, one of the 2.55 goes to property tax relief. 1.55 goes to actually revenue in the funds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have difference that. there too. Looking at the number. Yeah. yeah. So, keep, so almost half of ours goes to the property tax relief. That's got to be getting smaller, doesn't it? Well, yeah, you're still getting no. the one percent. One percent. You know, our, our lit money has been growing. Mm -hmm. Same thing. The because it, it gets calculated the same way. If you see the money in the funds going up, money in the property tax relief goes up as well. Then it's two point five five total. It's just part of it goes to property tax relief. Part of it goes to the general fund. Part of it goes to security fund. Okay. I was just those were just things I noticed in comparison. Yeah. Like on the perp you paid fourteen percent. Fourteen point two percent. That's been that way for a long time. They haven't changed that either for quite a while. Out of the four counties where there are two do it that way and the other two, the three percent is paid by the well, that's still quite a bit more when you look at the overall pay. Payroll tax in a sense, yeah. I mean, you get paid FICA on it, you have seven point six five percent. You're paying in this case, 14.2% of the curve. Three three percent is the employee share, eleven point two percent would be the employee share, I'm assuming. Yeah. So total of fourteen point two. Yeah, I'm sure they hadn't gone up a little bit, but yeah, maybe mathematical studies to show what you need, so they must be satisfied at least at this point then. So if Wayne County increases theirs by six or seven percent, and we do ours at five thousand, we're almost the exact same at that point, right? Or we're a little above them. Right. Now, I, I would think. What's the average? Thirty-five thousand a good bottom or average number for salary employees is it more than that. Did we just do that? And we 40, just did it. It was like 47, 48. 48. Oh, was that high? Okay. So <laughs> five. So it's, it's more than ten percent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's say eleven or twelve, maybe, kind of thing. So our average employee, of course, that includes sheriff department and everybody. Yeah. So it's forty-seven thousand. I just did it off the payroll by weekend. Okay. Yeah. So right 47, now forty-seven thousand. That's ten point six percent. Like if you look at position by position, I mean, that was the question. We're still still going to be lower. But if, if, if so, other counties go up five percent. Yeah, you went up ten point six percent. We're so. trying. We're desperately trying. But. Well, they remember that. Believe <laughs> <laughs> Some will. Some will. I will. So I will. I think it would be greatly appreciated. Just speaking for my staff, I think it would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, but you know, you got when you're looking at a five thousand dollar raise for every person. That's a lot of money, and, and the thing of it is, is I think what we got to realize is, is to get the, when you get this kind of raise, you got to, just like Mike said, we got to see some results, and every I'm sure every department can save money somewhere if you really tighten up, you know what I'm saying? The more you tighten up, then the more we can give you, you know what I mean? I have been here forever. Jim has been on the council forever. We have cut and cut and cut so many of these departments down to the bare minimum. That Even happened staff. at one point. That happened at one point. I, I'm not sure. Because I've been on this council, everything's being grown by quite a bit. <clears throat> I, back, back in the day, in exactly Mike was here then. We did cut things back pretty I'll say down to the, I'm not going to say bare bones, but they were, they were cut. Yeah, those were cut. Cut. Bare bones. But I think we probably relaxed over some, over the years, too, for sure. <clears throat> we can 
attest those first years I was on council was not pleasant. Yeah. But you know, human nature is you're gonna remember for a while, you're gonna forget it after a while too. I mean I still, still appreciate that, I know, but when it comes next year they'll want another one. <laughs> they will know and, and I understand that, but I'm just saying as you're going through that year, you need to try to cut every you can cut and save where you can save so you can help us or help the other council to give you more money next year. You know what I'm saying? Well, I can bring to you what was turned back into County General last year because of positions not being filled, of appropriations not being fully spent. So County General does recoup a lot of money at the end of the year because it's not spent, True. even though it's been... Well, I know, I'm, I'm not saying, I know what I'm saying, but I'm just saying, this is a, a lot of money to give everybody. It's, not all, it's going to vary by department some. Most of that money that's not spent doesn't come from the personnel side. It, it'd be mm -hmm. some extra, some Perth and FICA. Yep. You know, some of the large right. uh, areas would be where most of that would come back in. It wouldn't be the salary lines too much. I mean, if the sheriff department has some positions not yep. filled, that, that could have some. Detention, you know, or not detention, but the, the uh, 9 11 emergency center, central, central dispatch, that could be some kind of thing. But yeah. Generally, most departments have their staffing end up for the year, just most departments do. Two million in additional still worries me. If we have another year like this year, we give another two million, or maybe it's two and a half, and who knows what else. But all what we do is a crystal ball, anyways. You're, you're you're trying to feel good about where you've been, and even better where you're going. Can I clarify something on your additionals? Um, if I'm seven hundred fifty of it was for the out of county inmate. Mm -hmm. We put that in the budget for next year. Um, seven hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, seven hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> the detention centers in the budget. The detention centers in there. Um, but the seven hundred fifty thousand is still more than we've ever. I mean, we've never done out of county placements for inmates. Never. So even though we put it in the, in the budget. To me, it's still, to me, it's still an yeah. Well, she's saying it's not going to be additional next year. Right. She's saying yeah. your, your bottom line includes it already. Is what right. I'm so. well, I think that's what I'm saying, too. Just like if everybody, even I know it's, that's that, but if everybody helps each other, and you can save here or there, you know what I mean? This kind of helps everybody. Just try to help everybody to offset everything. It's so, coming. So theoretically, if that works, with what he's saying, and your budget and your return monies, we could see next year, at the end of next year, having eight or nine million dollars easily because of those things. Because this is all projected based on today's date moving forward. It's just and a projection. It, you know, when it comes to that number, really, because the sheriff department is a large part of the budget, it kind of comes down to their staffing. If their staffing is pretty full throughout the year, you're going to have less return. If they have a, if they have vacancies on that staff, they're substantial. You're going to see a larger number. If you look at the right. department by department yeah. breakdown, what comes back in the fund unspent, the sheriff department is going to have a big chunk of that. Perf and FICO, because we put some play in there. Perf, Perf and FICO will be uh, a portion where there's something coming back normally. Uh, I'm trying to think of another area that might pop out. Those are the big ones. Commissioner budget is going to be a piece with our sub, and sheriff department, usually the two big ones, where you're going to see that happen. Those are the big dollar items in the, in the big dollar departments. All I know is that uh, it seems like that, unless there's a mistake somewhere, which I don't think there is, that we're in a really good financial position. Our employees are not to comparable other counties. We're trying to get there. True. Our number one budget goal is to, you know, take care of our employees. Um, you're only as good as those that you can hire. And so we've come a long way. This is another just a little bump to to get us to be competitive, and I'm sure it's going to ebb and flow next year and the year after that you'll be back to you know square one. Yeah, I think Mr. Connor said. I mean, it needs to be clear the expectation. This isn't the expectation the year after. We have yeah. an opportunity to do something right. So, yeah, and the fact that. 
you know, the calculations show you aren't exceeding that average of your comparable <clears throat> counties. Gives you some, I'll say, satisfaction at least. Maybe to consider that. I mean, it, and you are in a financial position that allows you to consider it. I hope you continue to be in a good position. That's the only thing I say to that. I make the motion. Five thousand across the board, except as following ten percent. However, you got revenue. Ten percent increase part time. Part time. Second. So, before you go on, since I had increased longevity, <laughs> rewind. Um, the base year for the highway and central dispatch with a forty-five hundred dollar increase. Are you now saying you want to include them in this five thousand, or do you want to? I knew it? we were going to get there. <laughs> I knew we would make a motion, and then be, well, what are we going to do with it? And what are we going to do with it? I think we so just, it's always because there's always things to think about. I have yeah. all the stuff I got to think about. It sounds like to me the motion is to do the the five thousand across the board and not do the longevity. Yeah. So that you're saying five thousand for the highway, five thousand for central dispatch. Um, That's what she's asking. Number six. Yeah, you're not gonna, I know we're not doing, doing the longevity positions. They were got there. Yeah, not mandated. No, not I mean, that's, I'm not center. making the motion, but. That's the motion. No oh, yeah. longevity. No longevity. But 5,000. About 5,000. And there was a second that already there. So we are in discussion. I'm going to make sure I ask something else here, too. I think that, uh, 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 when, you meant, when you include the central dispatch, for example, does that make their budget exceed their funding capability? It, would, it already had. It already had. We discussed it. And, and we, we fixed it with general fund. General fund was going to make up the difference for uh, one, of the, one of the two funds is okay, one of the funds is not. I'm trying to remember which one was which now. Yeah, 1222. If you look at your... Yeah, we created 40. a budget for... Yeah, this one's okay right now. So it's got a $23,000 balance. So now you're going to you're gonna give them more raise than what they had in that request probably. Is that a correct statement? It's it's going to break even because I had done the 4500 okay. per. Now it's going to be $5,000. Well, you only had $23, so you're not going to get enough. But I'm taking off the longevity. How much is that? That's a portion. Usually that's a small part. I, I don't know. Well, look yeah. at it and see. Yeah. You, well, I'm, what I'm saying is you may have to bump up what comes out of the general fund to support E911 by whatever that difference is. And she'll let you know and that. I'll let you know. And she'll let you know at the next year 16th meeting. But it was, it was close enough that that bump could make a difference to be able to fund it right now. But did you say 4500 was in there? Yeah. That's what she was saying. So it's only a $500 difference. But and there's twenty three thousand. No, you like twenty three dollars. Oh, twenty three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> twenty three. I thought you were twenty three dollars. You really are saying twenty three dollars. That's specific. Breaking. Yeah, you're breaking. <laughs> this no. So that'll have to be an adjustment. Shut the deal with this. Prove that. Here we took money out of uh, the telephone. We the new department. Yeah, for... we did some things to let the general fund pay for instead of. United one one, I think that we did like one hundred and sixty thousand or something like that. Okay, clarify, clarify the motion. You good, Andy? So five thousand across the board. That includes highway E nine one one. No increase for longevity. Does not include anything for the sheriff's department or state mandated raises or elected officials. No, that's part of that. All of that. Okay, because I, oh. I thought you said elected officials were exempt this year because of the raise, I guess. So that's including elected officials that as well. That was including everyone yeah. to bring everybody up. But we would have some non union members in the sheriff's department that this That's what I was going to allude to. We do have three non union members, which would be the sheriff, the chief, and the administrative assistant. Those three employees are not union. Would they receive the 5000 they always had in the past, and then correct. Yes. yes. Yeah. Does it include commissioners and council? But it, but isn't there some administrative? There's secretaries. No, they are union, okay. but they have in the past received when we did. But um, but that's going to be up to you guys. I thought the ones that were not in the union. The three that you mentioned are not in the union. They, those three are not in the union. No, but you've got, but you do have sheriff's 
union employees that work in the administrative side that have received the same raises that the other employees have received because I don't believe they are dedicated to one of the units right. within the contracts. So you can just make it non-contractual employees who get the 5,000 raise, which you can say the people that are not included in the sheriff's contract would be the ones that would get that raise over there. Does that make sense? But we always open the question, like I just a minute ago asked, commissioners and council salaries also come into play here too when you're making sure what that motion covers. That $5,000 was included on all elected officials, all employees. Okay. And that was bringing them up to the average. All right. Anything else? Is there anything else? I have a motion from Mr. Polling. Here you go. I'm just, yeah, I, I can't, I can't, can't I'm not saying no, don't do it. <laughs> I, I'm, I, don't, I can't think of anybody else that would be included. Yeah. It, it always, I know it always comes up with it later. I'll think about that one. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm doing the finalization, we get the numbers to you. If I run across anything that I question, I will be sure to bring that to you guys. Obviously, when we adopt the budget, whatever's in there, when we adopt it, is what we're going to It's what it is. So, yep. right. okay. I have a motion from Mr. Polling, a second from Mr. Scott to approve a $5,000 across the board raise, excluding uh, the Sheriff's Union excluding the state mandated raises, but including the highway, central dispatch, and all county employees and elected officials. It probably excludes like we did the public defenders, we, you know, the- We've already- Yeah, it excludes the prosecutor. Right, I'll take care of all those, yeah. so. It does include it the public defender and staff. Yeah. Um, each. I, I did have a question about the public defender, the chief, the yeah, Bruce's do. position. Do um, we can go on? Mm -hmm. Was that a five thousand dollar increase, or mm -hmm. what he requested, or mm -hmm. on paper it says no? Okay. But then you'd have the prosecutor staff that would be included with them. Yes, thousand. the prosecutor yeah. staff. Now he requested maybe like a two thousand or three percent increase for his staff. I would do the calculation to make it out to a total of five. Yes, and I did do that on that. And the so public defenders below Bruce will get this five. Five. Correct. Is there anything else? So that last part of item two gets included in the five thousand. Now that last part of the sentence on number two. Okay. Okay. Is there any other questions or comments from the members? Public input? Uh, roll call, please. Polling? Yes. Scott? Aye. Hicks? Yes. Lemming? Aye. Middlesworth? Yes. Just remember, this can always be changed. The salary ordinance can be, you know, it, it hasn't been adopted yet. So. <laughs> I appreciate all your work on uh, doing yeah, that analysis. Um, I just know the employees deserve, deserve it. You guys know that. I mean, it is a hard number to swallow. But well, but I remember all the years of zero and, right. and several multiple years of zero. And so or some got some, some got none. So. Unfortunately, some of those people have moved on and they're no longer here. Yeah, so probably have to sleep in the garage. Yeah, my, my wife was the one in there. They took away. They did, they did. $1,500 is like the biggest one I'm going to get. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's I just want to go to the shop. Yeah. 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 Uh, we still have a discussion about ARPA funds. Uh, Frank can make it. We have a meeting Friday at nine o'clock with the commissioner. Is, is there a way you could be there, Mr. Pulling? When? Uh, Friday at nine. 
Mr. Connor can't be there, so is there anybody else available? Yeah, I'll be there. I know Mr. Lemming is already tied up, and I would assume you're at school. Correct. So. Thank you, Mr. Our kids are educated. Matthew Steve's a bell. <laughs> I don't know what you're using. It's a lasting impression. Right? Yeah, it does. Our next, do? our next regular meeting is Wednesday, October the 16th. Yes. And we still need to meet. The union committee needs to meet to discuss uh, the sheriff's request before that meeting, the 16th. Okay. So send me some dates that you're available. Okay. Is there anything else for the good of the order? Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Meeting adjourned.